This is the fifth episode in a series about upgrading my mini lathe. In this episode, I am focusing on customizing the power supply, specifically adding a 5 volt rail necessary for the control system and adding an automatic control for the fan to keep the noise down. So here we go. So I'm working on the thermal control for this power supply now. And the first thing I've done is I've moved the, uh, the temperature sensor inside the case. And I'll run some leads out of that a little bit later. The case will be mounted, so this is the bottom. Uh, so the fans will be sucking air in and blowing air out the top. And this should give us a good idea of the temperature that the power supplies are operating at. And to control the fan speed, I've come up with a little test setup here just to see how that works, to check the, uh, the type of control I want to do. I'm using a, a PWM type control. Currently I've set it at 20%. And I'm just using a single MOSFET to control both of them. I was thinking about putting two MOSFETs in, but I think it's not necessary. The current is not all that great, and it should be okay. So I'm borrowing the analog input here to control the, the PWM, and uh, you can see the fans here are running. So at the slowest is 20%. If I go below 20%, they basically stall out, and they start up again at uh, around about 15 percent but they're stable at 20 so i'm going to run from uh, 20 and then obviously 100 percent there was 99 but oops you get the idea so it's pretty quiet running at uh, 20 percent so even if the power supply is well below temperature i'll still idle the fans to ensure there is some degree of positive airflow and the circuit that i'm using and some of the details uh, here. The PWM frequency is 15 kilohertz. Somebody else did some experiments with that and I found it on the internet so instead of figuring it all out again I decided just to use the 15 kilohertz. It seems high frequency the better but obviously if it gets too high then it's going to create a lot of noise but I expect 15 kilohertz seems okay. And then the duty cycle or the width of the pulse 20% uh, to 100% for fast is the range I'll be using and I've defaulted it so there's a 3.3 volt pull up so that if the CPU is dead or not running or initializing the fan will go 100% and as you can see we have that one MOSFET driving the two fans and uh, sort of uh, stop spurious currents coming back through the uh, being generated by the fans so I have that uh, protection diode on there as well. If I reset the processor here you'll see the fan boots up to 100% and then Quickly, as soon as it boots up, it's back into normal speed. So the next step will be to, I think I'm going to take this circuit and make it into a little subboard that I'll mount in here and I'll get it all back in here so there's a, a connector that connects the, uh, the temperature sensor and the fans all together uh, in a simple way. So I've completed the little daughter board that I'm going to install inside the power supply. So the daughter board here, it's got a few different functions. It takes the 24 volts in and it will provide the power, two different fans, it's the same power. And I'll also put the 5 volt uh, buck converter on here as well. So the fan control will come in and I'm also providing a sense signal for the 24 volt rail so that I can detect uh, what voltage the 24 volt is uh, at. So I've got a voltage divider in here so it's just a simple voltage divider. So normally it would be 3.03 volt with this voltage divider and should provide some ability to measure the, the current 24 volt rail. And I also modified this so it's not running off the 3.3 volt rail, it's running off the 24 volt rail, so that if this is disconnected, the fan will still run. So in other words, if the um, microcontroller system is disconnected, the power supply can still run standalone and the, and the fans will, will run 100%. So this is the board. It's ugly. These green red boards what do you want to call them, circuit boards, they have uh, through holes on either side and it's a curse and a blessing. I mean, sometimes it's very useful and sometimes it's not. I don't know, I'm, I'm used to not having the through holes and to be honest, not being able to run jumper-wise simply, I mean, you can't jumper with these boards because, you know, you have the risk of having the circuit running through to the other side, so it, it gets a little bit difficult to use. But as I said, there's a, there's a positive to it as well. You know, sometimes it can be quite useful to have that through hole there. In any case, on the uh, on the right hand side here, we have the 24 volts coming in, and um, all of the circuit, as shown on here, is within this board. The two fan control outputs, which is the same signal coming from this MOSFET, and uh, all of the various 
resistors and diodes are installed on this board. And on the output side here, we have the yellow line, which is going to be the uh, the sense signal for the 24 volt rail, and the fan control signal, the PWM signal, for coming in here. And then we have the 5 volt rail coming out that goes to the microcontroller. And on this side, I've just installed a, a fairly reasonable size uh, capacitor there for the 5 volt rail, and this daughter board here. So the daughter board will just actually just plug straight in here. So we have a, the ability to mount that inside the power supply just like that. So I've got this all mounted in here now. You can see the little uh, daughter board here. It's mounted pretty well. I just screwed it on to one of the spare grease holes here and made an aluminium bracket. And you can see that the uh, the buck converter is sitting under there for the 5 volts. And I've tested it. it, it all seems to be working fine. And the uh, fans come on when nothing's connected. So nothing's connected here. Here's the output side. And the temperature sensor. So temperature sensor. And I've also just added another ferrite bead here to try to limit the amount of noise getting through it. It's a switch mode pass the blow, so it seems to I'm sure it'll be picking up a lot of crap inside the box. And uh, here's the 24 volts which goes back in to supply uh, this board over here. And the connector here, I've just got uh, something plugged in here just so I can test it. That that's actually where the connector will go in. And I'm sure that some of you are all panicking about this being very close to the uh, metal case. Uh, in fact, I don't think it's going to touch anything on the metal case. But in any case, I have put on uh, a chunk of Kapton tape just in case there is some sort of contact. So I finished the implementation for the automatic fan control of the power supply. I had to cut a small hole on the side here to get my cables coming out. I've got it connected down to the breadboard here for testing. You can see that the the PWM there is the percentage, the duty cycle that is being applied to the fan and the PSU uh, temperature is shown here. I'm just doing a, a very simple uh, adaptive control that goes between a minimum and maximum temperature range. Currently I've set them quite extreme so I can do the testing. Normally I will run it so it operates the fans as silent as possible. And so, so a little example here, I'm going to try and heat things up here a bit. As I've heated up the, uh, the case of the power supply, it's increasing the temperature. And currently the maximum temperature I've set is 26 degrees, which is quite low. So the minute it hits 26 degrees, it'll go 100%. And the lowest temperature is 20 degrees. So when it gets to 20 degrees, it'll go to the lowest PWM duty cycle, which is 20%. And so it's just a proportional calculation. So I've been working through the 24 volt voltage and current sense and I ran into a few problems. The first problem is that access to analog input ports. Well, the original implementation as I had it had the TFT data pretty much consuming all of A0 to A7. That's a problem because from A0 to A7 are basically the primary inputs for the analog inputs. I think there's B0 and B1 can also be used. You can see I'm using the B0 here. But effectively, what became obvious is that if I wanted to have a few more analog inputs to measure the voltage and the current, I have to rearrange it. So I had to go and rewire the test board and rearrange the driver so that it's now using PB8 through PB15 for the data and PA0 to PA4 for the TFT control. And at the same time, I also figured out the rest of the plan uh, for where I wanted what. For example, uh, PA9 was the uh, one wire for the temperature, that stays the same. Uh, the three analog inputs that I'm going to use is for the ADC for the pot for controlling the speed or settings and PA6, PA7 for the 24 volt uh, VA sense or VI sense, whichever you want to call it. Um, and then the, the timer based inputs PA8 for the motor uh, hall sensing and PB1 for the motor PWM output control, PB3 for the Chuck Opto uh, speed sensing, and PB7 for the fans uh, PWM control. Also going to add a buzzer later on, so PC13 uh, seems like a good candidate for that. 
and about six different uh, press buttons, which I'm going to have a, a single uh, button on every port. I know I could have multiple buttons on a single port or do something tricky, but I don't see any need for doing that in this case, and I want to keep a chip count as low as possible. Started doing the implementation for the ADC, for the voltage for the 24 volt, and it's all over the place, basically, it's the first thing I noticed, and I, and I started to have a look at why that was. Um, so currently in this configuration now I'm running standalone, I've disconnected the USB and I'm using the internal power supply that I've built here, which is the buck converter. And so that's weird, and when I plug in the USB, again, here, it will provide, it even got brighter, it'll provide the, the, the power here, and you'll see that the voltage goes up quite a lot. So I thought that's, that's something really strange going on. After a little bit of investigation, I found out that um, here's with the USB connector in installed, it's 4.94 volt, it's actually probably 5 volt, this old Fluke 11 is a little bit off maybe. And if I disconnect and go to the internal buck converter, so disconnect the USB, it drops down to 4.3 volt. Now that's not how originally it was set. So this buck converter is going crazy or something, I don't know what's going on. Um, so something really not quite right. So. I also did a measurement on the current. Currently, obviously, uh, the current is at 101 uh, milliamps. So 101 milliamps at 4.3 volts. So, so instead of using the buck converter, I've decided to replace the buck converter with this, uh, this 7805. Oh, that's a 7905. Okay, I've got to get 7805. Anyway, I'm going to use a 7805 for the 5 volt regulator. And given the low current, you know, there's a large voltage drop. I mean, you have to drop from 24 to 5 volts. So everything uh, else is going to be burnt off as heat. And so if there was a, a lot of current, uh, it'd be a problem. But I think at 100 milliamps, it's probably going to be okay. So here's the original buck converter I was using for the 5 volt rail, 24 to 5 volt rail. And as you can see, I put a couple of headers on there so I could plug it in. And that, that worked out well because it means I could remove it. I was originally thinking that if it failed, I could replace it. So keeping the headers made sense. but it didn't only fail, it just didn't work very well and uh, I can't be bothered figuring out what it is. Maybe it's a little bit underrated, but I, I don't think so. It says it's rated up to 1.8 amps and it's only pulling about 100 milliamps. So, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? So, give up on that and uh, go to a classic regulator style. So, uh, 7805, LM7805 or some type of 7805, maybe not an LM version. And so, to keep the form factor uh, into out, into out. I just uh, added the headers, and the circuit is very straightforward. It's just a 7805. But before the 7805, I've put a diode in there, so that creates a little bit of a drop. And after the diode, and on the input side of the 7805, I have this uh, thousand microfarad, 285 volts should be enough. Um, 105 degree capable cap so that should keep things nice and uh, solid no matter what so that'll fit right in there and uh, goes into this hole quite nicely just below and right in front of the fan so with the uh, 25 to 4 volt drop at about 100 milliamps or so this is going to need to dissipate around about 2 watts of, uh, of energy which is the problem with these types of uh, linear regulators, they, uh, they're very inefficient compared to a buck converter. But the good side is, is that they always create a very stable and reliable uh, voltage without any switching noise or any crap on it as well. So this, this is going to work quite well. Well look at that in there, it fits in there nicely right in front of that fan, so I think that's going to work very nicely. It just clears that little transformer by about 5 mil or so, but uh, the capacitor does, but I think yeah, that's going to be fine. And I gave it a bit of a shake and I don't think it's going to come out. So I think, yeah, it should be perfect. So after replacing the buck converter, it's still showing a low voltage. So obviously my analysis is not right. Something else is wrong here. So I guess, yeah, I better measure here. And make sure that we uh, are not having a problem between here and down there. I don't see what sort of problem it might be, but uh, I guess you know, clearly there's something wrong. So let me see if I can sort it out. So finally got to the bottom of these power supply issues. It ended up being a pretty uh, straightforward fix. You know, I think I made a bit of a mistake 
in the way that I approach the problem as well as far as debugging it and you know I'll explain that in a second but fundamentally uh, the issue was not the buck converter which makes more sense now actually because it was working fine before and it is rated for a fairly uh, reasonable amperage considering this is only doing about 100 milliamps and it's rated for a constant 1.8 amps apparently so currently I'm running back on the buck converter which was easy to do because I just plugged it back in and now I have a nice little uh, linear regulator module which I guess I'll use for something one day uh, but regardless, so the issue, well, what was the issue? The issue was it's effectively these uh, pre-manufactured test leads. They're too thin a gauge and even running at uh, 100 milliamps creates enough of a voltage drop so that we're only seeing around about 4.8 volts here. And the interesting thing is, is that I was using these uh, little thin jumper wires here to link from the breadboard to get the power supply from the breadboard to the blue pill basically. And when I measured the voltage on the blue pill, the 5 volt rail, it was only around about 4.5 volts. So all in all, we're losing about half a volt uh, just due to these little thin gauge wires. It sort of makes sense. Uh, you know, when I installed the cabling inside this power supply here, I purposely selected a heavier gauge wire because I knew voltage drop does play a role. And then when I was doing the testing environment, I just used to take a typical thin lead. So, you know, obviously it slipped my mind at some point. So now I have these uh, thicker gauge wires going down to the uh, breadboard and thicker gauge wires straight across to the blue pill and the voltage is uh, stable at 5.03 volts, nice. And you'll also notice that the ADC read value is pretty damn stable now. It's about within limits I expect, so I expect there's not too much noise or anything there. So my mistake in diagnosis is that I didn't measure the power supply value, the 5 volt rail, uh, within the power supply. I should have measured here. Um, or directly from the output connector here to see what was going on. Now I didn't want to do it from here because this is a little bit difficult because everything's connected but I, I could have just taken the case off and measured it and I did think to do that and then somewhere along the line I just seemed to overlook it. So very human and typical mistake so something to keep in mind. Hey, if you've got this far and are still here, great and thanks so much for watching. It was not exactly all smooth sailing but we did get there in the end Experiencing problems are all a part of the design and development process, be it issues you create yourself or others that just happen. I am more than happy to show the reality of this process. Even the most experienced people face such problems. I hope something you could take away from this is, you should expect problems to arise. And don't be disheartened when they do. Learn from these experiences and soldier on. Those who are watching closely may have noticed that a replacement EC has arrived. In the next episode, along with a few other things, I'll be installing this new EC and testing it. It will be interesting to see what type of performance improvements we might see. So I'll see you then.